Also, dass sogar diese kleinen Animationen da eingefangen werden, wie die Augen ablesen und so. Wir werden eine Ära von Sp Videospielen, Filmen haben, wo Schauspieler wieder auferstehen in verschiedenen Altersstufen, die schon lange tot sind. Wunderschönen guten Tag zu dieser neuen Live-Reaction hier auf dem Kanal. Äh, wir sind gerade live auf Twitch, aber wir sind gerade bei der News-Recherche über ein Video gestoßen, was definitiv die nächste Generation von Meta-Human darstellt. Also das heißt durchaus die realistische Darstellung von Menschen in Videospielen. Und da bin ich jetzt mal wirklich sehr gespannt, was Meta-Human 5.4 in dem Fall bringen wird. Auflösung ist leider nicht so pralle. I'm glad you're here. The crew's been waiting for you. And we're ready to help you build what's next. Come on, let's go. Right. Meta-Humans are now available for import into UEFN as non-player characters. <lacht> okay. So, Michael's jumped us back into the editor so we can get a look at our captain behind the scenes. As you can see, we carefully optimized for both quality and efficiency. We've gone from almost one gig for a hero metahuman down to approximately 60 megs in Alter. UEFN. With an average complexity ich meine, die haben jetzt innerhalb von einem Versionssprung das Ganze um Rechnen, Patrick, Rechnen. Den Faktor 15 verkleinert? Sehe ich das gerade richtig? Nein, nicht fast. Na, fast, na ja, 13 oder 14. Ja, 15, ja. Krass. And we wanted to make this process as easy as possible. You just save your custom metahumans in the metahuman creator. This captain character was based on the Rue MetaHuman preset. Once you have your creations saved in my MetaHumans, they'll be available to you in our new MetaHuman importer in UEFN. Importer. And depending on your project's requirements, there are also multiple quality options for you to choose from. Now, we can't talk about MetaHumans without also addressing the workflow creators use for creating costumes. There also, are many ways to author clothing. Wie alt, also, klar, die zeigen jetzt den einfachsten Fall, ne? aber Klamotten waren so lange so ein Problem. But in this case, we're using Marvelous Designer, a leading digital clothing software. In fact, we worked with our friends at Clo, the makers of Marvelous Designer and Clo 3D, to integrate our MetaHuman body data into their software and provide a new USD export option for your garments. That export includes geometry, materials, and the data you need for simulation setup. Now on screen, you're seeing the garment that was exported from Marvelous Designer being brought into the cloth panel editor in UE 5.4, and from there, we're setting up custom chaos simulations that have realistic cinema quality looks. As part of this tech in the upcoming ja, UE 5.4, gut, dass die Klamotten immer so in tausend einzelnen Stücken, damit wollen sie natürlich zeigen, was technisch möglich ist, aber ist natürlich immer totaler Quatsch. <lacht> ist natürlich immer totaler Quatsch. Introducing an auto sim setup that has sim data and ingest auto LOD generation and auto skinning. In addition, you always have the option to take a more bespoke approach like we have here if you want more iterations and finer control. Okay, cloth physics are available in UEFN as early access starting today, and now we'd like to show you how easy it is to dress a metahuman character. Jetzt bin ich gespannt. Und ich sehe hier gerade tausend Videos, die mich noch mehr interessieren. Unreal Engine 5.4 Tech Demo ist neu raus. Michael's going to demonstrate this for us live in the UEFN editor. All right, take it away, Michael. Thanks, Pat. So the first thing we're going to do is hide the default outfit that came in from MetaHuman Creator. Next, we'll add a new uh, Chaos Cloth component. This allows us a place to drop our new dynamic uh, cloth object. This was actually created in Marvelous Designer, set up in UE 5.4, and imported here into UEFN. Now that we have that, let's uh, add a new animation. So we can see how the cloth moves. Then we come down to the cloth, turn on simulate, and just like that, we have moving cloth here inside UEFN. Weil die Physik äh, Engine alles selbst berechnet, ne? Du musst nichts mehr anpassen. Das ist so krass mittlerweile, ey. All right, cool. So from there, our metahuman is ready to be used in the game. And we're really excited to offer cloth physics in UEFN for the first time. It's so important for creating convincing characters. And you're not limited to clothing on characters. You can use cloth physics anywhere in your environment. At last year's State of Unreal, you saw the power of MetaHuman Animator in UE, <laughs> and we're pleased to say that those same tools are now available to creators in UEFN. And don't forget, using our latest character device, you can also add a performance to some of your favorite Fortnite characters. 
Das Problem ist halt, das, was wir jetzt gerade alles sehen, findet alles auf super High-End-Stations statt. Ähm, aber am Ende muss es ja trotzdem, also das hier ist halt auf super High-End-PCs, ne? Ähm, am Ende muss es ja halt trotzdem für die Dinger hier, die hier hinter mir stehen, Playstation 5 und Xbox optimieren, ne? Weil das, was du da an Rechenleistung zur Verfügung hast, ist das Fünf- oder Sechsfache von dem, was du in der Playstation 5 hast oder so. Ja. You might have seen this in the recent Joke Night Experience, produced by Trevor Noah. For getting capture data into UEFN, we recommend using our new Live Link Hub application. This allows almost all capture devices that can stream to UE5 to also stream directly into UEFN and get recorded there. Even more third-party devices will be supported in Live Link Hub soon. Habe ich das jetzt richtig verstanden, dass du einfach die Bewegung live in die Engine capturen kannst, ohne jetzt großartig ähm, diese ganzen Punkte und so zu haben? Ne? Gibt's, ja, aber auch die automatisierten Tools, das bringt nicht für jede Konsole was. Ne? Ich weiß, da gibt es so Punkte, wo man dann sagen kann, ja, hier jetzt auf Mobile optimieren oder auf Switch optimieren und so, aber ja. Now, an essential part of any character's persona, particularly a Marvel hero, is their look. And it can be really distracting if the outfit doesn't look as realistic and believable as the rest of the world. So you can see, Cap's leather uniform fits just like you would expect in real life, with all the correct material properties and the complexity of creases forming as he moves. From a technical perspective, this is where we can effectively utilize machine learning. We can set up and run complex simulations in a package like Houdini, and import that data into UE. We then use this to train an ML model producing film quality deformations that run in real time. But none of this matters without great facial performances. The thing is, Unreal Engine 5 wird ja mittlerweile auch schon in Film benutzt. Also das heißt, ähm, in Zukunft brauchen die Helden gar keine Kostüme mehr anziehen, weil das ist alles dann in Echtzeit nachträglich durch die Engine angepasst. Und ohne, dass er irgendwas durchskippt oder sonst was. Ne? So, let's bring Azuri, T'Challa's grandfather and our Black Panther, into this scene, this time with his mask off. But I know who you are, Captain. America's hero, dancing around in red, white and blue underwear. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. Krass. You are unworthy of it. And as he pauses here, Roman, why don't you go in really close and really show everybody the detail that we have in these models. Um, it's, it's insane, right? It's like, amazing. Uh, it's essential for us to retain every nuance of the outstanding Leider performance that our actor, Kari Payton, ne? brought to Azuri's character. What you just saw there were untouched metahuman animator solves. Mm -hmm. So working with the metahuman process, we've been able to honor our amazing actors' performances and faithfully transform them into equally powerful digital performances. Now, of course, it das heißt, wir werden eine Ära von Sp Videospielen, Filmen haben, wo Schauspieler wieder auferstehen in verschiedenen Altersstufen, die schon lange tot sind. Wartet mal ab. All starts with the actor's talent and we're fortunate to have two of our cast with us in the audience today. So I'd like to introduce Drew Morline, who plays Captain America. <lacht> <Yeah>. <lacht> Yeah. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> and uh, and Kari Payton, our Black Panther. See, they hug. They're friends. They're not really fighting. It's all good. Um, and of course, I want to take this opportunity to thank them and the rest of our wonderful yeah, ich meine, cast so for going on this Bälle, incredibly weißt du? crazy journey with us. Uh, and now, as a special treat, uh, let's take a look at the entire bridge scene that you saw earlier. But this time, we'll keep Azuri's mask off to really showcase what we can do when all this incredible talent and all these amazing features come together. But remember, this is running entirely in real time. Awesome. Yeah, bloß, was steht da für ein Rechner dahinter, ne? Das That's far enough! I'm here on the business of the United States government. Und wisst ihr, was mir so ein Szenen immer wieder einfällt? So dieses... Ja, aber was bringt denn jetzt die nächste Generation? Nichts bringt die nächste Generation. Wir machen kaum Grafiksprung. Ja, es dauert halt nur ein bisschen länger, ne?
Yours is not the only business here. Stay out of my way. Stand aside. I do not take orders from anyone. Turn around, boy. Go home. Look, pal, I don't know who you are. But I know who you are. Captain, America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. Says the man dressed like an overgrown house cat. That shield <laughs> that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. I don't have time for this. Neither do I. Okay. Okay, and action. I need performance capture to work like a mirror. I need it to capture whether I'm acting scared. Guck mal, die steht, die steht einfach vom scheiß Handy, Alter. Damals hast du riesen Kameras davon gebraucht. Ne? Also, Wahnsinn. Or angry. And sometimes, all I need is Und sie muss immer dieselbe Nummer machen. <lacht> sie muss immer dieselbe Nummer machen. Vor allem, das ist ja noch nicht mal ein aktuelles iPhone. Das ist ja ein Elva oder so. Here's a look. Cut. Thanks, Mel. That was great. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Our technician, John, is currently pulling Mel's performance from the phone onto his machine, where everything will be processed locally. We have updated our live link face mobile app to capture all data at the best resolution possible with the device. MetaHuman Animator uses video and depth data to convert um, uh, this data into high fidelity performance animation, and it can even use audio to produce convincing tongue animation. Wie dicht einfach dieses Modell schon ist, ne? Mit dieser Kack Frontcam vom iPhone. John is currently scrubbing through the take to pick the section that he wants to process. Yeah. John, are we all good with the data? Awesome. So from now on, it's just a single button click to kick off the processing, which for a performance of this length will take less than a minute to convert into animation. So Mel, while well, that is processing, let me show you something else. Yeah. Oh, is that me? Yeah. This is what we refer to as your metahuman DNA. Cool. And this is generated by the capture we made earlier, right? Yeah, that's right. So. Aber haben die das nicht genau so schon? In der, das ist jetzt eine Wiederholung. Ich meine, es ist beeindruckend, aber mir kommt das so bekannt vor halt. From only three frames of video and depth data, we can generate a rig that predicts all of your facial expressions in just a couple of minutes. Von drei Frames? Wow. And do you only need to do this once for each actor? Yes, that's right. It calibrates. Damit kriegen natürlich auch die Actor wieder weniger Geld, ne? Weil weniger Aufnahmezeit. Is the solver to your face, so that we can produce the performance in, in, a, in a way that faithfully reproduces your original performance. That sounds cool. Yeah. So let's check back on the, on the processing, which today is on the latest CPU and GPU hardware from AMD. MetaHuman Animator uses a custom Epic Facial Solver and Landmark Detector. We can interactively look at the animation while it's being solved and compare it to your original performance. So it looks like it just, it's almost finished. After this, he's going to do one more pass to make the curves more stable, which is really quick. And from here on, we, can, we just need to export the animation. This takes only a few seconds. And then John needs to drop it in the level and add the audio so that we can see the result. So Mel's MetaHuman should now be ready in the level. Mel, you excited to see the results? Yeah, can't wait to see it. <laughs> I need performance capture to work like a mirror. I need it to capture whether I'm acting scared or angry. And sometimes all I need is a look. Also klar, man hat noch ein bisschen dieses, ein ganz bisschen hat man auch dieses Uncanny Valley dabei. Aber dafür, dass das jetzt eine Sache von einer Minute war, meine Fresse, ey. Ja, ja, na klar, deswegen werden, ja, deswegen gibt es ja auch Gesetze für die Schauspieler und sowas alles, ne? Das Ding ist, sie ist da ja so ein bisschen raus, weil sie wurde ja erst durch Hellblade überhaupt richtig äh, bekannt, ne? <lacht> Thank you all. So, Mel, what do you think? 
I think it's incredible because it usually takes months between performance capture and getting any results back, so this is blowing my mind. Yeah. <laughs> and all of this is solved directly onto animator frame and controls. In this case, we are using a bespoke 4D rig, which we created together with Ninja Theory for Hellblade 2, but it's also ready to use on any MetaHuman or any other rig that follows our new MetaHuman standard. Man sieht auch jetzt so wunderbar da oben an dem, an dem Kopf, ja, wie wenig Punkte das am Endeffekt <lacht> ja, genau. Äh, wie wenig Punkte im Endeffekt dafür sorgen, dass du das Gesicht dann am Ende effizient auch auf, in Echtzeit bewegen kannst. Ne? Let's have a look at that. I need performance capture to work like a mirror. I need it to capture. Und dann, jetzt wird es richtig gruselig, weil du kannst es ja auf jedes Gesicht legen jetzt, ne? Ah, schwieriges Thema mit KI. Auf der einen Seite voll geil, auf der anderen Seite. Oh. Whether I'm acting scared or angry. And sometimes all I need is a look. So the same thing works even on stylized characters. <lacht> Sign Perth Cut, take 13. <lacht> I see through your darkness now. I see through your lies. Aber es ist schon krass, weil es optimiert ist, Alter. Dann macht das nochmal einen Riesensprung. Krass. I will not appease your gods. I will destroy them. Ich muss immer an Detroit Become Human denken. Bringt mir doch einfach einen zweiten Teil, bitte. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab, and the mad whale, and started vending and cracking. Ich hätte schon mal noch mal Bock. Der hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox. Wie man sogar sieht, wie er abliest, ne? Also, dass sogar diese kleinen Animationen da eingefangen werden, wie die Augen ablesen und so. The jabbering crap and the mad whale and started wending and quacking. Okay, das ist jetzt alles Wiederholung. Du brauchst ja noch nicht mal Live-Bilder. Du brauchst, du brauchst, also die meisten Leute lassen sich ja schon von Stimmen am Telefon hinter das Licht führen. Ne? Das war nicht meine Klingel. Und jetzt sogar mit den Klamotten zusammen. Hier sieht man es natürlich, aber. Äh, äh. Aber ist schon krass, ich meine. Es wird jetzt so rasant gehen. Die haben ja so eine Fortschritte schon in den letzten Jahren gemacht mit KI. Ach, jetzt bringen die nur auf Trailer. Okay, okay. Ja, trotzdem krass. Und wir dürfen nicht vergessen, das hier wird ja dann wahrscheinlich schon auf der PlayStation 5 erstmal laufen. Ne? Also ich muss sagen, Death Stranding 1 hat eine ganze Weile gebraucht, bis du den Flow gekommen bist, aber dann war es so geil. Okay, wir ziehen uns noch äh, diese Tech-Demo hier rein, würde ich sagen. Weil irgendwie war das jetzt nur Trailer und dann muss Ritter Kaktus was daraus zusammenschneiden.
it comes with the flexibility of the blueprint system, so we can set up those sandbox interactions. Mm -hmm. It provides a world-leading renderer for amazing visuals, and thanks to Nanite, we can use high-poly models at all distances, making the landscape something truly epic to behold. To build our world, we use Houdini with Unreal to generate landscapes with a non-destructive workflow that allows our level designers to sculpt and regenerate without causing issues. Und das finde ich so geil, dass wir keine Pop-ins mehr haben, ey. We knew that our sand had to be world class. Using Unreal plugins such as Fluid Ninja, we were able to build sand displacement technology that reacts to small details like footprint, footprints from a player's walk or run. And finally, Lumen provides a lighting system that combines global illumination and bounce lighting to make both our exteriors and our interiors look truly stunning. For us, working with the Unreal Engine toolset, collaborating with our partners at Legendary, and working in the universe that was created by Frank Herbert and brought to life by Denis Villeneuve has been truly inspirational and exciting, and a lot of hard work as well. Humans have always had this drive to create, to build worlds, whether in text, on screens, or in games. As a company, we've been on this journey for a long time, crafting open worlds where players can live out their dreams and fantasies. Ist schon geil, was jetzt so möglich with that, ist mit der neuen Engine. We're yeah. very excited yeah, to share our latest trailer with you. Thank you very much, so you very much for listening. Graphics Let's take a look. Hey, from the GDC Game Developers Conference. Alter, Leute, ich will nie wieder bei einem Konsolenwechsel hören, das bringt doch eh nichts. When I saw the complexity that June 2 was ah, going to have uh, from its pre-production perspective and from its planning perspective, I realized that being able to use Unreal Engine, being able to have control over light staging all in pre-production, was only ever going to speed up the process. A large part of what we used Unreal for was to pre-plan the shots that we were trying to achieve. I think I just said Unreal 4. Krass. So that we were able to then put metahuman characters into the location to pre-plan when the shadow was going to reveal them, when the shadow was going to be off them. So using Unreal in pre-production was a godsend. Das ist so krass, ne? Also du kannst vorher die Szenen komplett mit Lichtberechnung schon alles einstudieren und musst sie dann nur noch nachdrehen. Ähm, das ist wie ein Raumplaner. Ja, damals habe ich keinen Raumplaner benutzt und am Ende sah irgendwie alles immer durcheinander aus. Und mittlerweile plane ich Sachen, die ich habe, immer vor und kann mir das dann schon mal ein bisschen vorstellen, wie es gut aussieht. Und sitzt ja meistens auch ein paar Stunden, bis es dann gut aussieht. Und das machen die jetzt mit Film einfach. Ja. The guys, the making the June Awakening game, have been quite inspired by the world that we had built in June Part 1. And they've built a world which continues the world that we built on film. And actually probably even expands upon it and builds a world that's greater than the film that we've made. And what excites me going forward in the future is that You know, you got gaming on this side and film on this side, and they've been very separated up until now. But slowly they're coming together, and I think right now we're at a point where they're literally crossing over. And I think the skills from gaming technology and the skills from filmmakers are going to cross-pollinate and become useful for each other. Ja, wie gesagt, ähm, ich fand äh, den ersten Teil, oh, also der zweite Teil soll wesentlich schneller losgehen, aber den ersten Teil, da, da muss man schon Sitzfleisch haben, ey. Capture using Arrakis is a test. Few survive it. Ich meine, an einigen Stellen wie den Wimpern siehst du es noch, ne? Ich 
meine, du siehst es an einigen Stellen, äh, jetzt zeige ich auf, mit, mit dem Finger auf dem Monitor, aber du siehst es an einigen Stellen halt noch, aber umso realistischer ein Teil vom Bild wird, also umso detaillierter, sage ich mal, realistischer ist vielleicht das falsche Wort, umso mehr siehst du, wenn andere Effekte abstinken, wie jetzt hier zum Beispiel äh, der Sand, der da weggeht, ne? Aber die Zwischensequenzen sehen gar nicht so krass aus, finde ich. Weil sie, naja, es spielt halt in der Wüste, ne? Da sah das Trending jetzt noch ein bisschen polierter aus. Hier zum Beispiel, da, da unten. Also irgendwie passt das Bike nicht rein, finde ich. Von der Beleuchtung her. Kann ich schwer beschreiben. Alles klar, hier. Penta ist auch dabei. Ja, vom Sound her schon krass. Arrakis is a test. Few survive it. But the humans that do awaken. Das ist MMO. Okay, okay, okay. Das ist ja die Grafik meistens eh nicht so, ne? One of my favorite also, lines krass, ich, from ne? Frank Herbert is, when you end a novel, it's like a train coming into the station that doesn't stop. You just jam on the brakes and let the sparks fly into people's imagination. Arrakis is a test, is what the Fremen say. And the player comes right into the heart of that test. Dune Awakening is a survival game at the base level. And it begins like a traditional survival game, you know? Like you're looking for water, you're looking for shelter. You know, where will you find water in the desert? Will you, will you take it from others? So when we talk about survival, sure, we start with the basic kind of survival, survive. And then when you've survived long enough, it's now time to think about political survival and how you progress halt within schon mal the universe. Geiles Setting, ne? Also The approach we take when building a world like Arrakis is, is we kind of have to think about where are the stark lines and how do we draw these epic spaces? How do we make them feel huge and the player feels dwarfed by everything they see around them? The intention was every time we saw the desert, it was highly brutal. And if you went out into the desert without the right protection and without the right knowledge, that it was sure death. If we looked at references from some of the hottest deserts in the world, the visuals that we saw from those deserts weren't enough. We needed this world to be even harsher. So we've been working with Legendary since the very beginning. They've been very generous with sharing with us assets from the film and allowing us to see things from the film and allowing us to really understand the, the vision that Denis Villeneuve has for the, the world and his characters and the way he's grounding Arrakis. But of course, a game is a much larger scale. So we need to expand upon that vision. We have our own army of concept artists who are sending things back and forth with Legendary all the auch, time. One of my weil er gerade davon redet, dass das Spiel viel größere Skalierung ist. Also die Spiele werden mittlerweile viel teurer werden als die Filme. Das ist total krass. Also, weil Filme, klar, du musst Sets bauen und so weiter und so fort. Aber das wird sich bald nicht mehr viel nehmen. Also du musst ja so viele Leute daran setzen, die Welt so weiter zu denken, dass du auch darin spielen kannst, ne? Und dann halt mit so einer Optik durchgehend. Best moments on this project so far actually was I got to go and visit the set of the first film with a group of the people from Funcom, the art directors, the lead artists. And we got to walk around in the actual sets that they had built in classic old school set building, massive palaces. And we got to look at the ornithopters from the inside and the outside, right? We got to walk around them and get a sense of their scale. 
Well, I think what they had done really well is they'd been quite inspired by the world that we had built in June part one. Now on a film you're sort of led on a journey by the director and by the script, whereas in a game you have the opportunity to sort of create your own narrative and create your own journey. The most exciting aspect for me is the fact that you can take what you've enjoyed and loved and you can build your own stories and your own places. And that to me is the ultimate goal, is to have you know, complete Find control. Wieder erstaunlich, wie sie diese Using Unreal 5 to create a game is obviously one of the better choices. GDC Unreal 5 gives us flexibility machen. through the blueprinting system. Also It allows us to handle Seite, amazing also graphics through the rendering system, the lighting system, such as Lumen. Lumen technology allows proper light bouncing. If I had to say one thing in the game that really benefits from Lumen, it's player crafted spaces. In our case, it's like you build a room and you place a window and the window lets in natural light and the light will fill the room in a way that feels real. And that technology hasn't existed before. Before Unreal 5, in the olden days, you had to use what we called the LOD system. And that meant that you had to create assets at different LOD levels so it doesn't slow down everybody's computer. With Unreal 5, we have this new technology called Nanite that breaks things down into the right amount of polygons at the right distance. So for us, As a company, this has made an amazing difference to the visual detail. Und das meine ich, du musstest halt vorher immer verschiedene Stufen programmieren, damit zum Beispiel Bäume im Hintergrund, die weiter entfernt sind und sowas alles, ähm, dass die äh, quasi niedrigeren Detailgrad hat, damit da nicht so viel berechnet werden muss. Und die neue Unreal Engine kann das halt in Echtzeit. Also das heißt, da gibt es Millionen von Abstufungen, die das Programm einfach an sich berechnet. Und es sieht immer krass gut aus, weil es einfach nur die Details ausblendet, die du von der Ferne sowieso nicht sehen würdest. Ne? The world. It allows us to create one really amazing looking cliff piece, for example. And then doesn't matter how far away or how close we place it, it performs well and it looks great. Where Unreal worked for us on June was that it was a fantastic pre-production and planning tool. On June part two, we had some very complicated scenes and we were able to pre all the way from Budapest what the light was going to be doing well in advance. It's the only tool that I've used, I, I would say, in my 25 years of shooting that is able to be used across a wide spectrum of films by f different types of filmmakers. The most iconic... I mean, you can mittlerweile mit Grafikkarten in Rechnern die Beleuchtung so berechnen, wie sie in Realität vorkommen würde. Ne? Creature in the Dune Universe is the Sandworm of Arrakis. And so we've tried to represent this in the game in multiple ways. So as a player, your first steps on the open sand, you hear the hiss of the sand in the distance as the Sandworm begins to move towards you. And when it gets close, you hear the roar as it erupts from the sand nearby. And at that point, You have only seconds to live if you cannot make it to rocky ground. So this is your first experience with sandworms. And these are the little ones. When you go into the deep desert, when you're harvesting spice, the giant ring mouth sandworms that we've seen in the film will erupt underneath the spice blows and suck harvesters and equipment down into the sand beneath them. And there's really only one rule. The sandworm will always come. <laughs> Wie episch er es erzählt, ne? Humans have always had this innate drive to create something, to build worlds, whether it's in their head, whether it's in text, whether it's on screens, whether it's in games. Funcom as a company has been on this journey for a long time, creating multiplayer worlds where players can live out their dreams and fantasies. We were there in the beginning with massively multiplayer online games. We've been there in the beginning with survival open world crafting games. And June is a combination of those legacies, bringing us forward into the future. It's the culmination of what Funcom means as a company and what we can deliver. And this legacy means that we need to really pay attention to what we're creating and how we create it for the fans. Because I think at the heart of this, there's a lot of people out there who really want to live in the universe that Frank Herbert created. And they really want to live in the visual world of the films that they see from Villeneuve. Also was man vor allem besonders krass merkt, ist Beleuchtung und Animation. Wenn man bedenkt, dass ja MMO und Open World immer so ein Kompromiss war, lange Zeit. Entweder du hast schicke Grafik oder du hast viel, was los ist. Und mittlerweile sind wir bei so filmischen Szenen angekommen. Man sieht, dass es noch keine finale Version ist. Zum Beispiel hier, er hier schmeißt überhaupt keine Schatten. Obwohl die eigentlich schon längst berechnet werden müssten. 
Ne? Aber es kommt halt alles noch. Ne? And so we need to create the gap between those two possibility spaces and create a game world where people can live out their fantasies that they've taken from June. And yes, it's a huge legacy and it feels at times extreme. Also manchmal, manchmal habe ich den Eindruck, äh, ich bin jetzt kein Programmierer, ne? aber manchmal habe ich den Eindruck, die Beleuchtung haut halt noch nicht ganz hin. Während die Szene hier richtig geil beleuchtet ist, auch mit dem Flammenwerfer und das orangene Licht auf den Klamotten, kommen wir in der yes, nächsten Szene legacy. zu denen hier. Und irgendwas, wie hauen die doch nicht hin? Die, die wirken total deplatziert. Als ob die überhaupt, also klar, die kommen von oben, aber irgendwie wirken die total flach. Ne? Also das ist so, ähm, kommt sicherlich alles noch, ist ja alles noch in der Entwicklung, aber trotzdem. And it feels at times extremely Und hier sieht es wieder okay aus, weil sie hier jetzt wieder natürlich dieses Gegenlicht haben. Ne? Overwhelming. But we really hope that we can deliver something for everybody. Und das meine ich mit Optimierung. Alleine sowas muss trotzdem optimiert werden. Da kann die Engine so gut sein, wie sie will. I have a dream. It starts in the ja, desert. Ja, alpha footage, okay. You cling to life. You find others. Friends. Und ich würde jetzt mal ganz grob behaupten, in dem Trailer werden wir sowas kaum sehen, weil das der zusammengeschnittene Trailer ist. You wander the dry, dirty streets of civilization. In the ancient halls of the testing stations, you find answers. You seek the secrets of the ever shifting sands. <coughs> Spice. Und das sind ja wohl die größten Quatsch-Helikopter, die es jemals gab. Na gut. <lacht> you do all of these things in my dream, Sleeper. I am terrified of what happens when you awaken. Aber sieht schon gut aus, ey. Meine Herren, ey. I must not fear. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. So, gucken wir kurz weiter. Ritter Kaktus wird das schon regeln. Und dann. Fear is the nein, nein, death erklär ich gleich. That brings total obliteration. Es sieht schon ver Alter. Okay, das ist beeindruckend, Alter. Wie auch dieses Ding da in Einzelteilen. Alter. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over and through me. Ist das nicht sogar der Schauspieler jetzt? In alt? Also in älter? Ich dachte, der wäre gar nicht lizenziert oder so. Ist er nicht? Aber er sieht schon ein bisschen ähnlich, oder? Und wenn es has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Na gut, jetzt nicht mehr. Auf den ersten Blick, okay. Wenn die Fear is gone, there will be nothing. Ja, so mache ich das auch immer, Leute. Riesenvieh. Ja, ich lege mich auch mit den Elefanten immer an und nehme mir da meine zwei Sichel. <lacht> genau. So sieht das aus. Genau. Only I will remain. Okay, dann würde ich sagen, das war die Reaction of Next-Gen-Grafik. Lecco mio wird da eine Menge rumkommen. Vielen lieben Dank an alle, die bei YouTube dabei waren. Und viel Spaß an Ritter Kaktus, der das jetzt hier alle zusammenschneiden muss. Tschüss.